This is me, the Undead Viking. I'm going to start off by saying I do apologize. The voice is going to sound a little weird because of the fact that I've been having a cold for the last couple of days. And this is the best my voice has sounded in quite a while. So bear with me here. Uh, the game I want to show you here is Raccoon Tycoon. Raccoon Tycoon is a game in which players are going to be playing, well, these cute little guys. These Raccoon Tycoon. Look at that guy. Isn't he awesome? Uh, the artwork for this game is amazing. Um, you know, and I always like it when uh, people take the time to have really, really cool looking art. Um, you don't have to have great art to have a great game, but it definitely does help. But anyway, so in Raccoon Tycoon, each person's going to be playing, well, a Raccoon Tycoon. Uh, you are living in the world of Astoria, and you are an anthropomorphic Raccoon Tycoon, and you are attempting to gather up resources and uh, you know claim railroads and play the stock market, and basically amass as much, uh, much money and like power and influence you have over the world of Astoria before the game ends. Um, it is a fantastic game with lots of different little mechanisms going on, and I had a great deal of fun playing this uh, with my friends and my family. So uh, let me show you how the game is played and kind of talk about it a little bit and we'll come back here and I'll kind of uh, go a little further into those thoughts. All right, cool. Raccoon Tycoon. This is Raccoon Tycoon. I'm going to show you how the game is played. Uh, but before I do that, uh, one thing, this is a prototype. So what you see in front of you, like, I mean, I know that, like the artwork's going to remain the same and things like that. Uh, but, you know, as far as the components and, you know, like how the thickness of cardboard and things like that, um, that will um, definitely change between uh, now and when the game is published. Um, secondly, I'm just going to kind of go over what you're looking at and then I'm going to dive into how uh, a, a game turn uh, goes if uh, when you're playing the game. All right, so these are all the different resources uh, that you'll be collecting. Um, you'll use those resources uh, to sell them on the open market, which um, is up there. Uh, and I'll explain how the market works. But you know, as you probably guessed, um, as the market price goes up, you know, you'll be able to sell those resources for that amount. So at the beginning, all of the markets are on the bottom. It isn't really worth it to sell your resources yet, but as they climb up to the higher levels, you know, say like woods at ten dollars a piece, you might need money uh, for one of many reasons, and I'll explain those here in just a little bit. And so you you'll sell those at whatever level uh, those prices are. Uh, there are several different types of cards in the game. Um, the price and production cards, um, you start with three of those. Uh, normally you have a hand size of three. Uh, later on you'll be able to build certain buildings that will allow you to increase your hand size. You'll be using those price and production cards to um, gain resources and also uh, you know, drive up the price of certain uh, commodities. Now, hopefully you, you're doing that for yourself and not you know, helping out one of your opponents. Uh, there are these railroad cards. Uh, railroads are going to have a name of a railroad, so like this is the Skunk Works. They're going to have an opening price. You'll be auctioning for these, and I'll explain that auction stuff in just a little bit. And there are also going to be victory points that they're going to be worth at the end of the game. Um, this is like if you have one Skunk Works, it would be worth two victory points. If you had two Skunk Works cards, you get a total of five victory points, nine and fifteen, and so on and so forth. And so you can see um, like the Tycoon railroads they cost more as you can see at least they, they start the auction price starts out more and then like you can see the victory points are exponentially larger uh, than what they have for skunk works um there's a big giant deck of these and you'll be going through those as the game goes on one of the ways the game can end is if you um, go through all the railroad cards and that will cause uh, the end of the game to occur and victory points tallied and the, the winner determined um, this is the city card. Uh, cities are purchased and are worth certain um, victory points. Uh, like this Beaver Ford is worth two. Um, there are several, um, there's a big, like I should say town cards, not city cards, but regardless. Um, town cards, uh, there are f like, you know, there's two victory point cards and then there's three and then there's four and then there's five. You have to get to the two to get to the three. You get to the three to get to the four. You know where I'm going with this. Um, to buy these, 
Uh, you either have to turn in the specific commodities, like if you wanted this city, it would cost two uh, wooden tokens uh, to get it, or you could turn in four of any commodity, and you'd be able to claim that town. You'll notice that it says two plus two with railroad. At the end of the game, when you're totaling up victory points, uh, for each pair, and that no, it isn't like there is a beaver um, railroad. So basically, you know, if you have a railroad and the city as a pair, you get an extra two victory points. Think of it as your railroads are kind of tying the cities, to, the towns together. So if you ended up with you know five railroads at the end of the game and uh, six towns five of those towns would score an extra two victory points because of the fact that you've paired them up uh, with, a, with a railroad. I'll go over that again uh, when we get to the victory point area, uh, when we get to the end. All right, um, there is this money. Money, obviously, is just going to be a commodity that you're going to gain and spend throughout the game. Um, this, this is really cool-looking paper money. Uh, you know, some people um, like paper money, some people don't. Um, I can take or leave it. I'm, I'm not, like, you know, I'm not a hater of it or whatever, but I do like the fact that we have a little badger, and like they're badger bucks is what they're called, and so it says in badger we trust over here, and so you know pretty cool. I I do I do dig the badger bucks, but um, finally uh, here we have different buildings. Uh, buildings are um, you're you're gonna buy these and you're gonna place them in front of you, uh, meaning that then that particular building is yours to use uh, for the rest of the game. Uh, some buildings, like these four uh, that are here, are give you bonus um, to bonuses to commodities. So when you turn in a card for a commodity, you also will get a bonus of plus one wood. So, you know, kind of cool stuff. And there are lots of different types of buildings. I'm just going to grab a bunch here. So, like, normally you can only keep, keep ten commodities at any one time. But if you had a warehouse, you could have, store an extra three commodities. Um, you know, lumber, wheat, trading farm. Our firm, I should say, you know, one dollar per wood or weed sold, so you get some bonuses going on there. Um, the rail baron, for each railroad you have at the end of the game, you get an extra victory point. So you know, it's it's just cool stuff like that. Um, they'll allow you to score extra victory points and uh, gain you, um, you know, like some special powers as the game progresses. Another way, oh, I should have mentioned this. Another way that the game can end is when all of the towns have been claimed. So that's another way the game can end. And I might as well say, there is a variant that says that if any one player ever gets a thousand bucks total, um, that can be a way the game ends and the, it, it's over right then and there. And, you know, so, um, but that's just a variant rule. And I'll talk about that again also here in just a little bit. All right, so uh, to begin with, uh, every person is going to start with three of these cards these price and production cards. Um, the price and production will have um, commodities that are up here as far as the prices go. And those are the commodities that you would increase the, the cost of on the different tracks. So if you turned in, uh, this card was the card that you turned in, you would increase um, the, the price of iron by three and luxury goods by one. So you just, when you did it, you go boop, 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 like that. And then down here, it shows uh, the production. Now, a couple things about production. You're allowed to produce three uh, commodities to begin with. Um, later on, there are other buildings that allow you to produce four or five if you have those buildings in front of you. Um, so this one, it just has the three. It has wood and two coal. So if you played this card, you get those particular things. But over here, you have production of five things. Now, if you only can produce three, you get to pick three. So you could say, I'm going to take the wood and two luxury goods. Or, you know, I'm going to take uh, the two goods and the wood. Or one good, one luxury good, and the wood. You know, so you can mix and match. That That's how these work. All right, so I'm kind of jumping around a little bit with the explanation. So why don't I actually just explain to you what you'll do on your turn. Um, you'll determine a first player, and let me move these guys down here. You'll determine a first player, and then um, on your turn, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, um, normally, uh, one action. There, There is a, a, a slight possibility that you'll end up taking two, uh, but um, the actions are as follows. Um, one of the actions you can take is production, as I said. So, like, you pick one of these cards, you show it. So, like, you know, if we did want to use this card, 
Actually, I already kind of did that card. Let's do this one. So let's do. So we want to use this card. So the first thing we show it to everybody, we put it down in front of us, and then we're gonna we go ahead and increase this by one, increase that by one, uh, because those are the two, uh, uh, you know, price uh, commodities that go up, and then we get to pick which ones we want. So let's get, take two luxury goods and a wood. So then you just take those out of the supply and they are yours to have. Now, when you begin the game, you'll each person will start with some goods. I didn't go through like the how the game starts kind of thing, but um, like the first player will start with less and then like the next player will start with, you know, one more and so on and so forth. So if you're last, um, you you do start with more goods as kind of like a catch up mechanism to make sure that uh, you know you you aren't behind the eight ball to begin the game. So you have these goods. Remember, you can have up to ten uh, at any time. That's one action, you know, and that's your entire action. The next person would take an action and so forth. Um, so another action you can do uh, is you can uh, sell a commodity. And so if it got back to me, and maybe this price got raised up pretty high, and I had. Um, you know these two, uh, these two goods here, these two luxury goods, and I wanted to sell them. They're at seven dollars each right now, so I pay. I, I drop, and you don't have to sell all of them. You can sell one. You can sell many of them. It doesn't matter. And I get fourteen bucks for that. Now, of course, I you know I, I did fourteen, so now I got to take the four ones. One, two, three, four. And I should mention that each player does start with ten bucks to begin the game, so you will have some money to begin. Um, but you know you take your fourteen dollars and those those are yours. Then for each um, commodity that you sold, you reduce the price by one. So um, as you uh, you know pay or, or sell things, just like a, a normal economy work, you know it's like you're selling these to you know like the people that need them. So after you sold them, uh, the need for those items is less. And so, uh, you know, you like, you know, you, the, the price is going to decrease. Now, I, I should also mention that I, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. I, I didn't mention that you always are going to keep draw one of these production price and production cards after you use them. So, the last time when I said that you you played one and showed it, you draw a new card to replace the one that you sold and put that in your hand. And as I said before. Um, you know, you you're all, you, like normally your hand size is three. All right. Anyway, so. Uh, now, uh, after production and uh, selling a commodity, um, the third action is called the railroad action. And this is the one situation where um, you might end up taking more than one action. So railroad auction, is, railroad action is an auction basically. And so what you're doing is you're going to pick one of these two railroads and you're going to declare one of those is open for auction and you will be the first person to bid. The minimum bid is the dollar amount that's on it. So the Skunk Works is two, uh, the Tycoon is seven bucks. So you pick one of those, say you, you said you want um, you know, Skunk Works, and then you say, okay, bid's two dollars, and then it goes around the table. And so the next person says three, next person says five, next person says six, it gets back to you, you pass. I, I'm not paying six dollars for the Skunk Works, somebody else can have it. Maybe pass, 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 everybody else, the person who said six dollars uh, gets the skunk works for six bucks. All right, fine. Now, this is the situation where you get to take another action. Oh, and I should mention that, like, if that's taken, then you immediately replace it with the next one. So here's another skunk works, actually. So because I chose the auction and I didn't get anything, I can take another action now, including doing another auction if I wanted to. Um, it, that's basically because, like, you know, you, you don't want to have a, a turn where you get nothing, right? So, um, you know, and, and, and waste a turn because, you know, there is an economy of turns here in this game and you want to be able to be producing every single time. So maybe I did that, I didn't get the thing I wanted, and, you know, I just say, you know what, attack with it, I'm just going to, you know, do a production card, and that would be your turn. You'd pay the production go through the process and then, you know, draw another production card and put it in your hand after you do that. That's the only situation where on your turn you'll get to take more than one action. All right. Uh, the fourth thing you do is just purchase a building. Uh, these buildings just have a price on them. So like if you wanted the vineyard, it costs six bucks. You take it, you put it in front of you. Um, you should also mention that you can upgrade it, you know, to if you have the money, 
you can see that's the price to upgrade. Um, you could get it, and then you'd get this would be worth plus two luxuries when you when you turn it. Now, I should also uh, this confused me the first time I played it, and like uh, when you turn in a production, the icon, the thing that you have doesn't have to match the stuff that's in the production. You just get this as a bonus. So if you use this as a production card, you get a wood, uh, an iron, and a trade good. And then you'd also, if you had this card in front of you, you'd get plus two more luxury goods. So you don't have to replicate the good on the production to get the bonus. Just, you know, something to keep in mind. As always, though, once you take a spot, you go ahead and you replace it with the next thing. In this case, it's a weed field. And you place it in there. Um, so you have those. And the final thing is you can purchase a town. And as I said before, you purchase the town uh, based on either the commodities or, you know, the specific ones or an any. So just to show you, I mean, that's like uh, a two victory point town. To show you, um, here's a five victory point town where it would cost five wheat or eight of any good uh, to get that one. So you can see they do increase in price as it goes along. So each person just keeps taking one action and the, and the game proceeds around. Um, the, the markets will fluctuate up and down. Uh, you'll gain money and spend money. You'll uh, get, get railroads. You'll get towns. You'll get more buildings. Eventually, um, the game will end. Usually in the games that I played, it was because we got through the towns because it just seemed to happen that way. Uh, then, at the end of the game, you're going to total up your victory points. You're going to get victory points for your railroads. You're going to get victory points for your towns. You also get victory points for, like, different bonus. Like, we had those on, like, there's a bank that will actually give you bonus victory points for how much money you have at the end of the game. Um, you also just are going to get a flat one victory point for each building that, that you created. Uh, whoever has the most victory points at the end of the game obviously will be the winner. If there is a tie, whoever has the most money uh, will be the winner of the game. So, um, and I haven't had anybody tie, uh, you know, as far as having money goes, but if, if that, sh you know, should somehow happen where you both end up with the exact same amount of money, uh, then you would just share your victory. Now, the sudden death victory is, if any point during the game, um, there's, somebody has a thousand bucks, as I mentioned, you don't actually total up victory points in that situation, um, that person just flat out wins. So it doesn't matter, you know, anything, it just matters they got a thousand bucks and nobody else does. And then they would be the winner of the game. Now that isn't, that's a, that's like a variant. You don't have to use that, but we did actually use that when we played the game. And it was actually kind of fun watching people try to like shoot the moon and like try to like gain the money as fast as they could and try to pull off a win that way. Um, only one person did, but it was fun to watch them, watch other people try. So, um, this is, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I was trying to, struggling to, to try to explain what I thought this game was. And, um, you know, it has all of these, like, inklings of other games that I've played that are very, very deep and very, very enjoyable for me. And this one was scratching a lot of those same itches that, of things that I like. I like games where I get to, you know, create, you know, collect resources. There's something about resource collection that I've always enjoyed. I like auction games. Uh, I like stock market games, you know, and I like um, games where, you know, I'm able to like, you know, create something, create synergy with, with different tiles that work well together. Um, and then, you know, just be able to, and also economic games as well. So it has this like amalgamation of all these different mechanisms and kind of like uh, themes going on. And uh, it, it, it produces a very, very pleasant uh, atmosphere for a game. Um, and I've had a lot of fun with this. And in a lot of ways, I feel like um, my plays, especially with my daughter, um, it's, this is the way I was going to introduce her to games that are probably like a little bit beyond her right now, like a, maybe a power grid game or some of like uh, more of the more introductory train games that I really want to get her into. And I feel like this is like that first step of getting me to that. And I really, really appreciate that about it. But let me talk about that and a whole lot more uh, in my final thoughts. I'm, I'm, my mind is all fogged up. But anyway, Raccoon Tycoon, you know, sorry. Anyway, um, hey, all right, so I already kind of talked about, you know, as far as, like, the stuff I liked about it, as far as, like, all the different mechanisms that are going on. You know, it was, um, there's, I played a lot of 
like stock markety games. I really, really like economic games. I don't know why they, I do because I'm really bad at them. Um, uh, you know, somebody, um, I'll, I'll be at a convention and somebody will be like, hey, we're going to play this, like, super engrossing 18xx type game, <clears throat> you know, you, you got, like, three or four hours, and I'll be like, yeah, and then I always feel bad because, um, they're going to spend, like, the first hour, like, you know, kind of teaching me how not to be dumb <laughs> while playing it, right? Um, so, and I never seem to learn. But um, but I just there's something about economic games and stock market games and auction games and just anything where you're dealing with money, and you're kind of like and that money is kind of like you know not not only is it kind of like your victory points and this is it isn't so much I mean there's ways yes you can get victory points through money but you know games where you're spending your victory points are things that I like and and money is like super important in this game because you need it you need it to like get commodities you need it um. Well, you shouldn't say you need to get commodities. Well, there are situations where you actually you can buy commodities. There's like buildings that you can use to buy commodities from other players and things like that. So yes, I mean you can use money, but um, you know there's new ways to. You need the money to have successful auctions. Um, you you need the money. It's just there's. I just like any game where um, where resources are collected. Resources need to be collected wisely. Resources need to be collected in the like right. The right resources need to be collected for the right purposes for the right time. And there's something really fantastic about the one action per turn thing going on, with the exception of the auction, as I as I said. But um, you know, you could be saying, "I really want to get that city because it is." Uh, you know, it, it, it's got like, you know, whatever, how many X, X, X victory points, I just got a railroad, I, I, so I, you'll be worth an extra two victory points, things like that are going on. And, but you don't have the right resources, you can't get it yet. So you have to, you know, spend a card, you have to do like the, 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 the price and production action by playing a card, it gives you the right resources to get it. And there's like one person between you and like the end of the turn, and you're kind of watching, and they have the right resources. And so you have this, like, tension moment, right, where it gets all the way around, and you're, like, hoping, and you're like, okay, just come on, let that city still be there so I can claim it. I mean, I like that kind of a moment. The, 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 the economy of action, meaning you're only going to have that one thing you're going to do, you always feel like you're kind of gearing up, to like the big cash in if you will like it's like okay uh, i need to have a bunch of money so i can start an auction you know and then like and so or or hopefully like you'll you have money and somebody else will start the auction and then of course then you can dive in and you can actually go after that thing perhaps you know now that you get the money or but unfortunately one of those things too it's like i need to be able to sell i need to be able to sell and somebody does the auction before it gets to you because they realize you don't have that money so there's some timing that goes on with the actions as well that I really, really enjoy. And it does promote a lot of interactivity between the players, like kind of being cognizant of where they're at, what they're doing, and, you know, you know, kind of being ruthless. Now, you know, there's a lot of, like, heavy um, economic games that are very ruthless, and I think that, and I, that, that's part of the thing that, I, you know, the economy games, like, kind of appeal to me in a lot of ways. But... You know, it, it also is a good way to turn people away from those types of games if they're not in the mood to, like, you know, come into the game, fists up, ready to go. And as much as my daughter really, really likes, you know, sticking it to her dad when it comes to games, um, I, I do know that, like, if games are a little bit too, you know, uh, spiteful, if you will, um, she's not going to enjoy herself. But a game like this that's just kind of edging their toes into kind of being mean... You know, and like it really kind of well, and this isn't maybe something I should be proud of, but it really kind of blossomed her, um, you know, uh, screw your neighbor <laughs> attitude uh, going on as far as like you know she she would realize that like she was sitting on you know like like fifteen bucks say, and she saw that I only had five, and she'd say I'm gonna go on auction, and I'm gonna bid six because she knew. That like there is no way that like I could I could beat that bid, you know. And of course I had to reprimand her and say, you know, you could have just bid five and you would have got it. But ha, 
you got to pay the extra dollar. She learned a hard lesson that day. But anyway, so I mean, I really kind of really liked that. That, that, that I was able, you know, she she learned that from playing the game. And I, and I liked to, to see her looking ahead like that. And like looking at her, you know, formulating that strategy. It's something I enjoyed. Now, I do have in my gaming group, you know, this is, this does feel a little light, you know, for some of them. But I think this is one of those games where it does, as I said, scratch that itch of the other larger games in, 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 in a good way that allows us to play something that kind of satisfies that need a little bit without having the big engrossing game that's going to take all of a Saturday afternoon to play. So the artwork's amazing, as I already said. I, I really dig this picture. You know the th part I like, like about this picture more than anything, besides that bow tie that the guy's got. I just love his little hand there, like holding his jacket like, hmm, I am a tycoon. I did, I, I, for whatever reason, I just thought that was awesome. It just He just evokes... I don't know. He's very regal, if you will. Uh, but um, this is a, this is a blast. It's a lot of fun. It's a game that um, it's going to be challenging. Uh, you're going to have a lot of interaction with the other people at the table, and um, you know. And I've said this about a lot of games lately, but it, it also does seem to last the exact amount of time that it should last. You don't feel like you're just spinning your wheels and churning your way through the last few turns of it. Um, the players are determining in a lot of ways how long the game lasts. And that's something I also like as well. How people that feel they're ahead can step on the gas and try to get that game over quickly. People that, you know, feel like they, they need to play catch up are you know are able to kind of put the brakes on a little bit by, you know, like making sure certain actions aren't taken. So there's stuff like that that I really like as well. So there you go. Raccoon Tycoon. If you have any questions about the game, please ask Way. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. Uh, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and for putting up with the old scratchy voice that I've got from my cold. Uh, until next time, uh, this is the Undead Viking telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.